Well, hello again, everyone. Um, this time it's going to be what I would, I suppose, like to call a filler of a video. Um, I have been rather restricted this week in my ability to get out, partly because of the weather, which has been atrocious, and secondly, because I've been having some repairs done to my shower cubicle. So for me to be able to put a video out uh, this week, this Sunday, I'm going to give you my first impressions of my latest acquisition, which I wasn't actually expecting to get in quite this way, and I'll explain. I've been looking for quite some time for a 25mm prime lens. I've been very fortunate in as much as I've come across a Panasonic Leica Lumix f1.4 25mm lens, and here it is absolutely uh, gorgeous optic Let's let me take the cover off it's actually um, the previous owner actually went to the expense of purchasing a Panasonic ultraviolet filter um, to put on the front which is always a good sign but a lovely piece of glass for those of you using full frame this probably looks more like a 1.7 than a 1.4 lens that's the beauty of micro four thirds the lenses are much more compact than full frame equivalents um, it is an absolute joy to use it's got uh, seven diaphragm blades giving a nice circular um, uh, opening which gives nice creamy bokeh um, I'm not sure that I like that word bokka. I just like diffused background details more. I don't know. Um, <laughs> it's one of those things really. It has nine elements in seven groups um, and it's an extremely well put together optic. Uh, of course it has all the relevant connections on the back as one would expect with it being auto focusing. No aperture control, it's sort of fly by wire or whatever you want to call it these days. Panasonic actually get these manufactured it, it's definitely manufactured in Japan and I believe it is manufactured to Leica's stringent quality control and it's of course a Sumilux lens so it's a Leica patented uh, construction now uh, as I said I've been looking for one of these for quite some time and I was very fortunate in as much as I got this one just let me put at least a back cap on it because lo and behold what did it come with but a Panasonic GH1 <laughs> I'm getting far too many cameras um, I'll come on to that in a minute um, so the uh, owner of the 25mm 1.4 Summilux was very happy to sell it at an extremely competitive price uh, because he gave me basically a GH1 for nothing um, so I'm delighted with this absolutely I have been using it very briefly this week in fact I've just been out in about an hour ago taking some shots in my locality and for those of you that have an interest in the sort of historical aspect that I like to include in my videos the images that you're going to see are taken in uh, Princess Road or Princess Avenue depending on which side of the street you walk on because um, it is in fact a boulevard. Princess Road was opened in 1846 as an adjoining main road between the town centre, city centre, correction, between the city centre and the newly opened Princess Park which is literally just round the corner from me. In fact from my back windows we look out onto Princess Park and a number of my videos feature Princess Park locations. So Princess Road was opened to link the city centre to Princess Park and then uh, extra land was purchased to widen the road and make it into a boulevard so we have a lovely tree-lined boulevard with Princess Road on one side and Princess Avenue on the other side so I thought I'd <laughs> just run through some of these stills I've taken please do not be expecting anything artistic or creative these really are record shots I've just been out and about with the GH1 and the 25mm 
um, standard focal length lens just to put it through its paces and see what I think make sure it's all doing what it should do but I thought I'd start off by showing you a postcard dated 1905 which is what the um, uh, road Prince's Road used to look like and you can see straight away two things really I want to draw your attention to one of the old uh, tram cars which ran right from the city centre up as right down the whole length of Princess Road which is about 1.3 kilometres in length uh, all the way down to the south end which is the way we're looking now to the entrance to Princess Park and I'll come on to that in a minute so the next image is one of uh, the boulevard itself taken from the centre if you like looking north towards Liverpool city centre I just wanted to draw your attention to how much the trees have grown over the last more than 100 years quite amazing really once you get to the northern end of Princess Avenue then you are up towards the Jewish synagogue and this is just a record shot of the ex exterior and um, I've also got an interior shot which wasn't taken by me so I'll put a credit down below just a fantastic interior and then here we have a plinth uh, in the foreground um, it's the William Huskisson plinth uh, up until the 1980s there was a statue to William Huskisson who was at one time an MP in Liverpool. Uh, the statue was removed as a form of protest because he objected to the abolition of slavery. Need I say more? He was only an MP for a few short years because he lost his life on the opening day of the Manchester to Liverpool Railway. Any of you who have an interest in that, there's plenty of information online about uh, that particular incident. Um, almost right next door to the Jewish synagogue, we have another ecclesiastical looking building, but it was in fact home to the Liverpool Deaf Society for a number of years and sadly as you can see it's now completely derelict I have no idea what they're hoping to do with it and then as you walk to the south end of Princess Avenue we come to the main entrance gates to Princess Park as you can see in the distance there and uh, this uh, stonework has been erected within the last three or four years when the whole boulevard was redeveloped and uh, with a cycleway running down the middle and all that sort of thing. And then finally I've got a couple of photographs taken here just inside Princess Park. Early one morning this is a sunrise shot showing the obelisk in the foreground and then finally here we have a close-up of one of the uh, drinking vessels frozen over uh, just to illustrate the bocker or diffused out of focus area in the background. Now because I'm uh, accumulating really too much kit at the moment I'm going to do another giveaway rather like Nick at during the mean whilst and I did with the two legacy Canon lenses a while ago. This time it's going to be uh, a competition. Don't switch off because it's not hard. Um, but the lucky winner <coughs> will receive not one again but two legacy lenses and this time it is the uh, Yashica 135 2.8 telephoto lens for 35mm film cameras or whatever uh, digital camera you want to adapt it to and the 50mm f1.9 so that's the prize if you like a 135 2.8 and a 50mm f1.9 for Contax Yashica bayonet mount cameras uh, and if you're using micro four thirds then I will also include the adapter for uh, so you can mount these onto your um, camera body whether it be Panasonic or Olympus or whoever it might be uh, I don't have 
a complete set of caps. I have front and rear caps for the 135, but I don't have caps, not yet anyway, for the 50 mil. I'll see if I can sort something out in the interim. So that's the potential prize. The competition is very simple. One of my eagle-eyed subscribers has already spotted the fact that on my think tank shoulder bag I have a badge pinned to the strap. I'll put a still image of it on screen for you now. What I would like you to do, and you can do this by searching the internet, it's not difficult, is to tell me what the badge represents, what it was possibly given for, and what you think its importance is to me. Why would I wander around with it on my camera bag? Uh, the biggest clue I can give you is the fact that it is not photographically related. All you need to do is to drop me an email. Don't put the answer in the comments because everybody can see that. That's gonna be a bit near. So drop me an email. The My email address is somewhere on my channel details already on the about tab thing but i'll also put it down below in the notes drop me an email and i will be announcing the lucky da -da 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 winner in a few weeks time i also hinted that i had purchased one item that was absolutely brand new i've not yet had the chance to use it uh, again it's a weather related problem i'm suffering from really the item in question is going to be of more use to me when we get slightly longer days and a little bit warmer weather that's all i'm going to say and the other item which everybody's desperate to know about i said it was going to take me out of my comfort zone there we are and that's all I'm going to do right now before I put it away out of sight with all that being said I think I've done everything that I need to I've probably forgotten loads but as usual I really hope everybody is enjoying their photography and that you are all safe and well there's an awful lot of nasty stuff going on in the world right now let's try and um, keep our feet on the ground stay fit stay healthy enjoy your photography i'll see you all really soon bye for now